going on guys? My name is Matt with Carolina Coops and today we are in beautiful Santa Fe, New Mexico. It is day 46 if I did my math correctly and we have finally just finished this beautiful one of a kind custom chicken coop. So what I want to do in this video is what we always do and that is just do a walk around and point out all the things that make this coop probably the best in the world. And that's not something I would normally say but I tell you there's so many things going on with this coop from the quality to the design to the size you know we talk about all the time that size matters when it comes to chickens and you know even more details that i can't think of right now but i want to go ahead and get started so one thing i want to point out is the overall dimensions now this coop is modeled after what we call our craftsman coop but basically this is going to be two craftsman coops in one and you'll see more about that when we get to the back when i show you the hen house and the shed area but coming off the front here isn't our typical way of designing chicken coops where we are actually wider with the run than we are depth, if you will. So overall, that just made for a very interesting design. And truth be told, I'm a huge Brady Bunch fan. And I tell you, this reminds me of the coop that we did in, it was right outside Orlando, Florida. Very similar. I think maybe that kind of is where the inspiration came from for this coop. We opened the entire front. Uh, we talked about closing off the top half, if you will, but obviously that would just be too big and block all that off. Just love how we went all the way up with the screen. The overall run is 34 feet wide and 24 deep. And you'll see when we get on the inside, there is a wall that splits that right in half. And then in the back is the hen house shed area, which is an overall 10 by 18. The point I wanna make, and I know we got some awesome pictures at the very beginning of the foundation, the Overall concrete weight is just under 40,000 pounds. I should have looked it up before I started the video, but I want to say it was around 38 to 39,000 pounds. Why is that important? Well, again, when we're talking to a structural engineer and we're designing this chicken coop, when it comes to designing chicken coops, you got to think, okay, what's going to be good for the chickens? What's going to be good for the humans? What's going to you know, look really well? But also, um, I know we got a bunch of pictures that maybe right now, Ingrid, you can bring up that B-roll or those pictures where we are up in the mountains. We're 7,000 feet in elevation. It is wide open. So you can only imagine the amount of wind that can come whipping through here and potentially lift this entire structure up. So we had to really emphasize and focus on the structural integrity, not only for weight, which we really don't have to worry a lot about the weight here, but uplift, especially when you're designing a chicken coop. When you have an open run that is solid roofed, which I highly recommend, you never want to run where it's not roofed, think of it as a giant parachute. And if that wind comes in, especially hits a solid structure, it's going to try to push up. So we had to really focus a lot of our numbers based on that. Keeping it anchored starts with this beautiful concrete foundation, just under 40,000 pounds of concrete. So that's absolutely incredible. Again, just our standard metal roof. We did add the extra... Uh, metal trim work with the gabled metal trim and the drip edge. We don't do that on our production coops. And that's mainly just to keep the price down. But when we get into these high-end luxury custom chicken coops, it's just absolutely necessary. Now, another dimension I know people are going to ask is from the ground level, from where I'm standing right now, is going to be 14 feet to the peak. It's actually 14.6 because I am down below grade, if you will. Um, and then when you add the cupola, which is about three foot, so that's what, 17 feet. And then we have another three foot weather vane so that's what 21 feet and that would be what i would say is our overall height of this chicken coop um, the other thing i wanted to point out before i forget and you may have already noticed is this is our predator apron right here so for all my youtube chicken police um, the redundancy in the structural and also making sure that the chickens have the perfect life and are gonna be very safe is incredible here. This concrete foundation is, if I remember correctly, it was about 11 or 12 inches thick and it goes down below grade 18 inches. So technically they did not need a predator apron, but we already had what we used on the coop, which is our 16 gauge half inch hardware cloth, black PVC coated. That is the same gauge that we use for our predator apron. So the customer actually came up with a great idea and said, why not use this instead of the fencing material, which is a two by three opening, which is great. We love it, it's very affordable uh, to keep predators out from digging underneath. Uh, there's, we've seen some snakes on site and I told them that honestly, the only snake can get through here is 
little juveniles, which can be free chicken feed, if you will. Um, but it was a good point to go ahead, add to the redundancy of the protection of the chickens, and add this half-inch hardware cloth on top. This apron is not going to disappear, so the customer is going to come back in after we're gone and do their coopscaping and go right on top of it. So this will disappear and probably come up below, uh, just below the sill plate and grade off naturally. So that's going to be, look beautiful, and I can't wait to get the pictures of that when it's done. The other thing that I do want to point out is basically because of the size of the coop, we went with framing of everything that was six by. So like right here, we have sandwich walls that are two by sixes. And then of course you see these beautiful six by sixes. Now, one thing that is so cumbersome about pressure treated in the West Coast is they, they do this perforation to it or the stapling and we've had to go through and just try to do the best we can to fill all those holes because it just looked awful. Um, so that's another thing that just came up in the beginning of this build, which just was a nightmare. Um, but I do like the bigger, beefier boards. It just matches the overall size. All right, so let's go ahead and walk around here. Again, because this coop is split in half, we have two rain barrel systems. And you'll know, in case I forget when I get over there, thanks to COVID, things are just on back order. Things don't arrive correctly. Um, these barrels actually arrived before we showed up 45 days ago and didn't realize it until two days ago when we went to put the barrels in. One was the correct color, the other color was black, um, so they didn't want that. So you'll notice when we get to the other side that there is a barrel missing, but that is why. But everything else is hooked up, so this is just our textbook rain barrel system. They are going to put gutters on and run the downspout, and they're going to run electric and do all that. Uh, but I have a feeling they're going to be probably adding a, a, a hydrant down here and topping these off because it just doesn't even rain here ever. <laughs> All right, let's continue walking around. But we actually have three pairs of Dutch doors, French style, if you will, um, where it's just real simple. We just have two Dutch doors in one. You know, I, I don't remember exactly why she wanted that. I think it might have been all for aesthetics. It is definitely overkill, but it does look beautiful. But again, these are just our basic Dutch doors. You can open up the top half. Um, definitely note that we got carabiners on all the locks that could potentially be penetrated by a predator, like a raccoon coming up here, using, taking advantage of their pinkies and thumbs, trying to open this up. Uh, the customer asked us yesterday, you know, do you include the carabiners? And my answer was no. So one thing I always forget to mention in the videos is we don't include them. And I think I get criticized a little bit for that. But the reason is there are so many different styles of carabiners. We got customers that want stainless steel, aluminum, zinc coated black. They want different sizes. It's hard to make everyone happy. So I have learned that 99% of the time I just let the customers order their own carabiners. But that's all they are, very simple mechanism to keep your locks from ever being opened by especially a nocturnal predator like a raccoon. Anyways, let's uh, since we're right here, let's go ahead and walk in. And actually while we're here, I'll just show you. We have a barrel bolt up here and we just open it up. And I tell you what is really nice about that is if you have to come in with like a really large wheelbarrow, you just wanna make sure you have extra room to get in and out of here. That is when it's nice to have those double doors. Well, here we are in one half of the chicken coop run. So 17 feet from this middle wall to the outside wall, again, 24 foot deep. And I know I also get questioned a lot, and I always forget to mention this, is what do I put inside my run? And I remember the phone call months ago now when the customer asked, what should I put inside my run after the concrete's done? And I actually got my horticulturalist or a horticulturalist, Bethany, that who's uh, actually we met right here in Santa Fe, New Mexico a couple years ago. Uh, she's done some coopscapes for us uh, going behind us doing some beautiful companion planting. Anyways, I referred to her and I tell you, you don't want to overthink what it is to put inside your run, but I always tell people when it comes to a lot of things, when it comes to the chicken coops, think about what did chickens do before coops were invented. And what I'm standing on right now is what I refer to as the forest floor. Now, obviously we're not in the forest, but that is is exactly what we're trying to mimic. So we have this beautiful roof above us. All right, that's the canopy. That's gonna protect the chickens, um, especially giving them shade. And think about all the, the, the nutrients. Everything is just going to fall down from the forest floor, whether it's you know leaves to nuts, berries, monkey droppings, whatever. It all goes down to the floor, and then the microbes need to be able to do their job to break that all down. And that is what we want with the chickens. One of my favorite things is to include an advanced composted hardwood mulch. 
All right, I want to say that probably makes up 80% of the material that is inside the run right now. And then the other, I don't know, 10 to 15%, it is good to add some topsoil to mix in with it. And then if you are not going to let your chickens free range, which is the case here, um, you have to make sure that they have everything, including, and you'll notice, um, I'm not sure why they're white, but there's just about maybe yeah, 5% at the most, little tiny rocks. The chickens need to uh, swallow these, put them in their gizzard so they can grind up their food because they don't have teeth like we do. So this is actually technically their chicken teeth, if you will. So it's one thing that I think sometimes people overlook when they're not free ranging. You got to make sure they have everything that they need inside the run. The other thing that I've noticed, and I was talking with the customer yesterday, especially here, it is very dry. And I always want to emphasize if you're, you know, looking to buy a chicken coop or design a chicken coop and build it yourself, you want that solid roof run. And the number one reason is you got to have the shade for the chickens. They do not do well in the heat. They do extremely well in the cold. However, if you got a run and a lot of people put too many chickens inside the run, if you're one of those people that say, well, I got to go and clean my run, you got too many chickens in there or the run's just not big enough for the number of chickens you have. Either way, um, if you do not have that roof over the run and it rains and it gets too wet, you'll end up with a sanitation issue. So I always tell my customers, I'd rather have the solid roof run and have a dry problem than a wet problem. And because it is so dry here, and this really wouldn't hurt anywhere, you can come in and miss this. You know, I'm not saying to come in and soak it down, but it doesn't hurt and the microbes will benefit from it. This is the first coop we built on site from scratch. The only thing that was cut and sent out from our shop in New York was our hoppers, our feeder hoppers, which we have two of them, which I'll show you here in a little bit. Those were cut on our CNC, which fit together beautifully. Um, and the storm shields, we call them, or the polycarbonate run covers. Everything else we outsourced here locally. Well, we did, and we did bring our screen. But anyways, um, it turned out really, really well. We were able to get beautiful dug fur. So um, starting with the rafters, these are all two by 10 dug fur rafters and the reason why we love dug fur is it's just a very stable strong wood it's just great to work with um, the other thing is you'll see um, hopefully this is a good shot right there those slopable hangers we had to special order them and the originals came in wrong so that was fun so that put us back another week but we did eventually get the right ones in we painted them and absolutely love that. And you can also notice too with that shot up there that you can see the ridge cap that goes over top of the metal roofing. All that still, just like all of our coops, allows the hot air to escape. So we sandwiched all the walls. It wasn't structurally necessary, it's just simply for aesthetics. And we had to match, again, the six inch wide. And I get it, it's five and a half, but you get what I'm saying. We got two by sixes sandwiching our two by sixes there on the outside. And then we use two by sixes, all dug fur to sandwich the back of the six by sixes that are on the outside. Just an absolute beautiful look. And I tell you, it's going to make it so easy when the customer has to screw in over a thousand 40 screws putting in their storm shields, but it'll be really easy. Here are the feeder ports that we started using maybe about a year ago. I absolutely love these. Yeah, look how dusty it is. Um, now we did have to add some height for their chickens and this one is designed for their bantam. So we are about uh, six and a half inches to center. So that'll work well for their bantams. But either way, what is nice about these feeder ports is it helps save on feed. And you'll also understand how it incorporates the hoppers on the inside, but because of the base coming up, the concrete base, and you got the sill plate. And then the customer did request, they added another two inches with two by eights for the flooring. It ended up making these really, really high. So a simple solution is just make a platform so your chickens can hop up here. And this is just what we came up with, some wood that we had left over and got some more, you know, like these four by six dug fur to make it easy for the chickens to get up there. Um, I do believe they're going to do something more permanent long-term, like a nice big piece of flagstone or whatever, something that maybe looks a little bit better, but I didn't think this turned out too bad. Also coming around right here, again, because we had to go higher, you know, there's a domino effect. Everything comes up. So we had to make the uh, ladders a lot longer. So I think these were just a little over six foot, if I remember correctly. 
Again, there was a lot of numbers. Yep, 72 inches. So it's two feet longer than our standard ladder. Um, the customer did also want to make sure that if she needs to, she can close the hens off inside. Um, this also is a great way to serve as extra protection, even though this door that allows the chickens to go into their hen house is completely protected by the run. Um, I know some customers love the extra security, but again, this was more so she had quick, easy control if she did not want to be able to let the chickens come out inside the run. Um, and all we do is just, you know, it's actually not needed, but again, if the wind gets whipping, but there is a hook right here that is spring loaded that can simply go on the eye bolt like that and keeps it from opening. These should look very similar if you've been watching a lot of our other videos or seeing our coops. These are just our standard hen house doors with a deep litter door. We got our doors right here that have the dowels so that you can simply pop these in if you want. You can never have enough ventilation. So very, very same exact doors we do on all of our coops. But again, when you're designing a custom coop, it's amazing the domino effect and the other things that pop up that you weren't expecting. And these two doors, we were not expecting. So what happened was inside there, we have two hen houses, each that are six by six, all right? But because the hen house is only 10 foot deep, we can only pull out the drawers, which you'll see here in a little bit, four foot. So that means we had a cavity, if you will, a dead spot of two feet. So Evan, our designer, came up with the idea of just adding storage underneath here, which I thought was a great idea. So again, all these are our basic doors and just tons of storage underneath there. You'll see some of the storm shields I just threw in for them. But what is nice is, you know, if you want to put some rakes in there, chicken feed, hemp, whatever, you have a ton of storage and the same thing on the other side, which actually passes through. So let's go ahead and open this up. Now, another thing that I love about actually having the clean out doors, the hen house doors, the deep litter door, whatever, um, inside the run is technically when you do go to clean it, you can just scoop it out, throw it into the run. Let the microbes continue breaking it down. But again, just like all our other coops, there's the deep litter door. And again, we are up higher a little bit more than normal, but it's so easy when it does come time to clean pulling sweeping motion, no bending over. Um, here's that beautiful high density polyethylene that makes up the walls and the floor of the deep litter system. And hopefully you'll get a good shot of the egg box that is on the inside of the hen house. And I'll explain why that isn't what we normally do, but we had to in this particular situation, again, just because of the way design works and notice the roof. If you ever have egg boxes on the inside of your hen house, that roof needs to be at at least a 45 degree pitch so that the chickens don't sit on it. And one of my favorite parts of all, our, all of our coops is I just love these rope wrap roost bars. So we incorporate a total of six, there's three on each side. And again, these are about six foot long and they just look beautiful. The chickens absolutely love them. And if you haven't seen videos in the past, the reason why this is nice to have is it allows air to circulate underneath the chicken's feet if they ever cut their feet and you're having trouble having bumblefoot heel. Uh, this was actually a recommendation that came from a vet in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I absolutely loved it. And we sell a bunch of these. I absolutely love them. Now we have another set of Dutch doors right here. Um, we're just gonna open it up. There's our lockout cable that we have on all the doors. We're just gonna walk right through here. And again, it's the same size run, but you're gonna notice something a little bit different over here. Yeah. The customer has two roosters. Um, I did try to help her to find a new home, but it is tough to home roosters. So, and she has a huge heart, so I give her a ton of credit, but she did want to make sure that the roosters had their own area so that they weren't constantly fighting with each other and or traumatizing the hens. So it was an afterthought after we did design all this is to add what we've just been calling the rooster walls. So we just ran one wall from six by six to six by six and then partitioned it off with a wall, you know, going perpendicular that way to that six by six. And I think it worked out really well. I know they love it. We screened it off with the same half inch hardware cloth and I made them each a little rooster house, just an A-frame rooster house, just to give them a little something, even though most likely they're just gonna sit right on top and, and roost. Um, and they will have storm shields when it gets really cold. So they may not need that, but it was something that the customer wanted. So that's what we built for them. My YouTube chicken police, I'm sure you're already saying something that I couldn't agree more. 
All right. I tried to tell them I wouldn't do it. Don't do it. You're going to hate it. Um, the chickens are going to roost up here without a doubt. Always remember chickens want to go to the highest point that's in their instincts so that they stay safe. Now this is higher than the roost bars inside their hen house. So they're going to want to go up here. They said, Matt, we get it. That's fine. Um, they'll end up putting something up here. They said after the fact, but for budget purposes, I believe it was, and just trying to get the job done. They didn't want to, it, it was going to add a lot more work to be able to make this go all the way up and add a lot more time, which wasn't always on our side with this build, but that's what these walls are for. I know the roosters are going to absolutely love it. And again, at least they'll have control and I couldn't emphasize enough to the customer and let the roosters go. Let's see what happens. They've never had this much room before. Um, and, and see what happens. All right, so now if we come over here, it's the same exact thing, it's just mirrored. We got our hen house doors, um, cantilever doors, our storage doors underneath, six foot ladder, another little chicken door, and our step where you can see the only difference is over there, I put these two boards on edge to bring it up higher, but I would say this is already set to go for their standard hens. Also, before I forget, Love these windows, very similar to all our other windows. Um, again, you can never have enough ventilation. I am down lower than normal, so I do have to kind of cheat, hop up a little and put the pegs in, but it's just that simple. We don't have to worry about a stick coming loose or a chain not working. And those dowels, I can't wait to do a brake test. Those are oak dowels, they will not break. Um, under a normal situation. I know people out there again are like, oh, those dolls are gonna break, never had. Um, but anyways, that's just a quick, easy way of how to make sure that these windows function. We've got the polycarbonate, 400 times stronger than glass. And of course it's backed up by that 16 gauge black PVC coated half inch hardware cloth. Oh, and the other thing too is, love these doors. Now I know, again, they're gonna do some grading. They actually already had to bring in a bunch of fill just to level off this pad. They had it compacted to get ready for their foundation then have us come in. There's a good shot of that sill plate. And I love when we do the sill plates. I wanna say this was uh, two by eight or two by 10 pressure treated that we just kept tap conned down into the concrete. And then it just makes it so easy when the coop walls sit right on top, we can anchor it right down to the sill plate. But anyways, love these doors back here. When they do their coopscaping, they're also going to put a step back here, but I am lower than normal. I did give them a carabiner for right here, even though they probably never need it. And this is a double door, um, but this will open up again, makes full easy access. All right. So I mentioned earlier that we have nest boxes, not egg hutches. And the reason for that is with this particular design, we're in this large shed, again, 10 by 18. And then inside here are two hen houses, six foot deep, 10 foot wide. But we needed places for the feeder hoppers to go. So we have a little hallway here that leads down to one feeder hopper and another feeder hopper over there. We didn't have a good spot to put in an egg hutch, but it made it real easy to take advantage of this wall and put in a drop down door for your nest boxes. So it's a real simple solution but that is just what worked out best here. And um, these are just 12 by 12 nest boxes, put your nesting material in there and your chickens should have no problem laying eggs in there. Um, they will be transitioning from a, a different area, but they will eventually learn to nest in there. Now I have had some customers mention some things that helped them out recently to help encourage their instincts to nest in there. One is using nesting material, not industrial hemp, not pine shavings. They want long stringy material to build a nest. But um, I don't remember who it was, but someone said that they wanted the inside of their egg hutch painted black, make it really dark. And think about that. That's whether the chickens want to go to lay their eggs. They got to feel safe and cozy. Now, just like all our other craftsman coops, this is what I was talking about before. This hen house is six foot deep. So we only have four foot here. So that's all we could use for these pull out drawers. All right, so that's how we ended up with that two foot cavity on the other side. And again, it just worked out well to use that for storage. So this is just great for um, putting your hemp down there, whatever it is you want to store. And then also speaking of storage, if you look up here and I know I got some pictures, but we have a loft we've been referring to it as and uh, tons of storage up there. I think that's where they plan on putting their um, storm shields when they're not using them. But the other thing to note, and actually I guess we could talk about when we go inside there, that maybe you've seen all that screen up there. We do have 
24, 12 on each side. Sean referred to them as sky lights. It's just to help ventilate any hot air that could accumulate inside here to help it escape. And then out through the cupola, which also, speaking of the cupola, look at that. It is beautiful. If I remember correctly, I think it was three by eight. It is big and it is not, the windows are not functional. Um, it will allow hot air to escape out through the ridge cap, but we did decide to just permanently attach with screws, polycarbonate. You have so much room in here, so much ventilation. I am not worried at all about the cupola only allowing hot air to escape out through the ridge cap. Um, okay, so while we're out here, let's come over on this side. This is the feeder hopper that I was talking about that we had cut on the CNC, brought out by the guys from New York. Uh, this is all cabinet grade birch plywood and then the face frame that goes right around the front and just regular cabinet doors. Real simple, but again, tons of storage. So we got storage down there, we got storage up here. Um, I tell you, I originally put a handle in here, but the door, because the handle was sticking out, the door would not stay back. So what we ended up doing is, and actually the customer came up with this idea and I really like this. It's just a surface mount inlaid little pull handle. And then that drops down and now the door stays open. These are not painted intentionally because it's just paint on paint. They stick, it'll drive you crazy. That's the feeder hopper. You can see the portholes down below. That's all lined with that food safe, high density polyethylene. The chickens enjoy fee, uh, eating out of those ports because it gives them something to do. But more importantly, it reduces drag back and helps save on feed. A very common theme with this chicken coop is again, if we have it on this side, we got it on this side. Same thing here, just another nest box. Uh, drop down door, get to your eggs. Then if we come over here, same exact thing. Um, if I remember correctly, I want to say we could fit 300 pounds of feed down inside there. So what's nice about that is it's really a set it and forget it system. Um, just dump your feed in there and let the chickens do the rest. There is something really cool about this coop that is brand new. We've never done this before. I'm just going to open this up and let's open this up and let's see how we can get a good shot for everyone. Unless you've been living under a rock, I'm sure everyone has once upon a time stayed in a hotel and maybe you've been in one of those rooms where there's connecting doors, where there's two doors that allow you to join two rooms. And what I realized is those doors have a particular name and they're called communicating doors. And what the customer wanted here was something very, very similar. So that's what we built her, our chicken coop hen house communicating doors. Now, right now, this is wide open, giving her the option to let the chickens just do what they want, come and go, sleep where they want. But if she wants to separate them, let's say she's got to quarantine some chicken or it, it, it's new and we got to introduce them, we can simply just drop this door down and this is a screen door and it'll keep them separated but yet able to see each other all right now let's say for whatever reason you don't want them to see each other well that was real simple all we did is put the same kind of door over here just solid so that you can segregate them completely i'm sure they can hear each other talking but again that's what she wanted and this is what we came up with so these are the carolina coops first chicken coop hen house communicating doors as we painted everything was just one color did black hardware it was meant to blend in with the environment here this is a very large structure a very beautiful structure but when we were originally designing it for the customer they really wanted to make sure it blended in and i think we did a good job with that with the um this is a duration paint called Ember, if I remember correctly. It's a satin finish and it does blend in, but I tell you, we, you know, we took a couple trips on some back roads, took a couple snapshots during the project and it's, it's noticeable, <laughs> but it's beautiful. That's the important thing. The paint came from Sherwin-Williams. We absolutely love Sherwin-Williams. So let's walk out here. Um, so again, it's just mirrored. We got, you know, the Dutch doors here. We got another window there, all function exactly the same. Um, but the one thing I do want to point out that was very different. Again, the customer was a structural engineer. He knew his numbers. He knew what he wanted. And now looking back, I mean, I just, I had a ball 
learning so much from him. And there were so many times I loved when he said, you know, he would come out at the end of the day and go, oh, that's awesome. You know, I think he was a little worried about how good can chicken coop builders be. But either way, um, I noticed throughout the process, he always referred to numbers. And that makes sense. That's what engineers do. And like I mentioned earlier, this was all about uplift. And when we had to anchor these six by sixes, we did it in a way I never even heard of. And I actually thought he was crazy at first. Um, but he wanted to have concealed brackets, and that's what we did inside here. But when we anchored the brackets down to the concrete through the sill plate, it, we had to use a special epoxy that was made by Simpson. It's a 3G epoxy, took a special caulk gun. Uh, we had a lot of fun there. But it's actually the strongest way to anchor your hardware for your hold down to your concrete. And the other thing that I found really interesting is when I got here, I was like, why is the concrete so wide? I would say eight inches. And the reason for that is breakout strength or setback for your anchoring hardware. So the point he made that again, I was like epoxy, you know, why not use expansion bolts? Uh, why not use tap cons? And what he said is the epoxy if the concrete was to ever fail, it can still hang on to the concrete versus if you have expansion bolts constantly putting pressure out as you tighten that bolt up. If that concrete fails, you lose your hold down strength. So I put it to the test. We had Evan get on a crowbar that one day to test it and he wasn't able to pull it up. And I put a, our biggest impact on it and it was not able to turn the bolt. So that was pretty cool. 45 days. I tell you, we've never been on a coop build this long. Um, I, I feel like I was living in the movie Groundhog's Day coming, you know, waking up to the same thing every day, but it is done. I am very, very proud of this coop. And I love that we just added a whole nother new department, what we call the turnkey, where when you get into a coop this big, it's just, it makes more sense for us to come out with the design and order all the materials locally, have it right there and build from scratch on site, just like we would uh, if you were building a house. But the nice thing is we're bringing our expertise and we can have drop shipped certain materials like the polycarbonate run covers or storm shields are called now and the half inch hardware cloth, uh, things like that. And also because we're able to work with nationwide vendors like Sherwin Williams, that was incredible. They saved our butts on this job, being able to go out, find the paint that was MIA in the entire country, but they did it. Uh, things like that. So this was definitely a very long, stressful, unique build, but I couldn't be happier. Uh, we had to have a couple guys come and go and, uh, you know, we did what we did, but bottom line is, uh, when I met with the customers this morning doing the final walk around, they couldn't be happier. And that is one of the things that uh, is so important to us. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, if you have any questions, comments, please leave them down below. And like I just said, if you're going to give me a thumbs down, that's fine. Just put a comment down there and tell me why. I really want to hear from you. Thank you so much for all your support. And if you aren't already following us, please follow us on Instagram. Make sure you like us at Facebook. And of course, subscribe on our YouTube channel. So this is it. We are done. I'll see you next time over and out from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Take care.